Hi there, welcome to my views and news, some new stories for you from Ethiopia, Somalia and Somaliland. Firstly, an update for you on what happened in Somalia yesterday where UAE's military officers came under attack. How many were killed? Who was the attacker? Uh, the incident happened at General Gordan Military Training Academy in Mogadishu, Somalia's capital. Secondly, Djibouti is intervening in Somali land. Djibouti, I have been saying, is a key player when it comes to Ethiopia, Somali land, MOU. Djibouti wants to be relevant. And reportedly, Djibouti is trying to mediate between Somali land and uh, some groups, Somali land government uh, and Somaliland elders rather, and uh, a faction which is turning into a breakaway faction, uh, almost, uh, almost a self-administered area uh, is being governed by this faction in Somaliland. Uh, thirdly, viewers, Ethiopian military has released some pictures from Oromia. It says that uh, Dozens of OLA members have been killed uh, in an operation by the military in eastern Oromo. Firstly, viewers, uh, Somalia, what happened in Mogadishu yesterday, I broke this news in the live chat last night. Now I have an update for you. Uh, UAE has been under fire in Somalia since the signing of Ethiopia, Somali land, MOU, Al Shabaab, uh, Somalia's government officials, Somalia's activists, journalists, they have been lashing out at UAE for allegedly backing, supporting uh, the MOU signed between Ethiopia and Somali land. So, anti UAE sentiment has been on the rise in Somalia. And we saw a display of this anti-UAE sentiment yesterday when at General Gordon Military Academy, UAE's military officers came under attack. The UAE uh, military officers have been training Somalia's forces for years. These are military trainers, basically. And uh, they were visiting the... General Gordon Military Training Academy when a Somali soldier opened fire at them. Muhammad Hassan is the name of the soldier who opened fire at these Emirati security officials. Uh, three deaths of officers, UAE's officers uh, have been confirmed by UAE's defense ministry so far. Three UA military officers, one military officer from Bahrain, uh, Bahrain have been killed in this incident. Uh, some other deaths too, I think total number of deaths around 10. Three from UAE, one from Bahrain. The shooter Muhammad Hassan uh, was killed. Uh, he could not be captured, he was killed. Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for this attack. So, Al-Shabaab brainwashed the man or he was maybe, maybe brainwashed by the propaganda launched by or the narrative. People say it's true, it's not a propaganda or the narrative launched by Somalia's government and government-backed elements that UE is backing Ethiopia in gaining access to sea through Somali land. Hassan Sheikh, the president of Somalia, has uh, extended condolences to the families of uh, Emirati officers who have been killed and he said that it's an act of terrorism. Terrorism is a global threat. All should join hands to eradicate this uh, threat of terrorism. UAE-Somali relations are set to deteriorate definitely. Though this is not the first attack by Al-Shabaab on uh, foreigners. Al-Shabaab has been hitting uh, Ethiopian troops. Uh, it has been trying to hit uh, uh, Emiratis too, but this attack could be linked to Ethiopia, Somali land, MOU. And by the way, I am uh, seeing reports of some Somali activist journalists. Uh, they are not 
condemning the attack. They seem to be approving the attack that UE has no place in Somalia. UE officers should have been told to leave the country. UE is working to divide the country. So this is the general uh, uh, picture which we are receiving from Somalia about UE's role in the Horn of Africa and Somalia. Somalia. Secondly, where Djibouti is a key player when it comes to Ethiopia, Somali land MOU. Djibouti wants to be relevant. Djibouti a few weeks ago mediated between Somali land and Somalia. The talks uh, concluded in the form of some understanding, but uh, immediately after that, Somali land signed an MOU with Ethiopia. And Djibouti led mediation between Somalia and Somaliland collapsed. Uh, but now Djibouti is mediating in Somaliland. Djibouti has sent an invitation to SSC Khatomo traditional elders uh, to attend a meeting in Djibouti. Somaliland traditional elders of Wadani party are visiting Djibouti reportedly. And these Wadani party elders want to talk to SSC Khatomo traditional elders. SSC Khatomo is in charge of administration in uh, eastern Somali land, Lassanud, etc., where there was heavy fighting uh, last year. And uh, Somali land military and SSC Khatomo fighters fought for several weeks. Somali land military had to retreat from uh, areas controlled by SSC Khatomo. And now SSC Khatomo is, in, is administering these areas. In the fighting, uh, some Somali land government uh, soldiers were taken prisoner by SSC Khatomo fighters. Talks in Djibouti are about release of prisoners and some other matters. Reportedly, SSC Khatomo uh, did not agree to attend uh, the meeting in Djibouti. So far, it has declined the invitation reportedly. So, Djibouti wants to be relevant in Somali land. Uh, ideally, Djibouti would like to undermine Ethiopia's Somali land MOU because Djibouti is losing. A customer and that is Ethiopia. Ethiopia pays billions of US dollars to Djibouti in port fees. Djibouti's economy depends on revenue from Ethiopia. A few days ago, IMF uh, released an assessment of Djibouti's economy saying that if Ethiopia withdraws from Djibouti, it could uh, strike a blow to Djibouti's economy. So Djibouti wants to be relevant. I have been saying Djibouti uh, can attract Ethiopia by offering a better deal to Ethiopia. It has not happened so far. Maybe Djibouti believes that Ethiopia won't be able to gain access to see through Somali land. It will return to Djibouti. That is why so far no progress in talks between Djibouti and Ethiopia. And I think Ethiopia is convinced too. It wants to diversify its use of ports. It wants to start using Kenyan port of Lamo, some ports in Somali land, maybe in Eritrea as well, if Eritrea shows flexibility. Last few words, uh, Ethiopian military has issued a statement on its uh, social media page. The military claimed it has inflicted uh, heavy losses on the Oromo Liberation Army. Ola has been fighting in different parts of Oromia for decades. Uh, it was Olaf. OLF, then in 2018, it turned into OLF and OLA. OLF is now political wing, OLA is armed wing, OLF political party under crackdown, leaders in prisons, OLA led by Jelmar Okum Sadereba, fighting, uh, waging armed resistance movement against the federal government. According to Ethiopian military, Romo Liberation Army fighters have been in Bonia Boshe Woreda of East Walaga Zone for years. And allegedly, they have been committing atrocities here. People have been suffering economic losses, other types of losses here. 
but in an operation military cleared the area endf claims that more than 50 ola fighters were hit in the operation launched by the military several were captured weapons have also been captured for, from these ola fighters in the operation launched by military pictures of some captured weapons guns have been published by ethiopian military uh, Yes, in some parts of Oromia, Ethiopian military is conducting limited, targeted surgical operations against the Oromo Liberation Army. But no large-scale operation has been launched against Ola so far. Uh, I reported this week, uh, citing some pro-Ola sources, that Ethiopian military was planning to launch an operation, military operation, to push Ola away from Addis Ababa. The operation was due to be launched in Horogodoro, Valaga. Uh, West Shoa, South West Shoa reportedly. The operation has not begun so far. Main focus of Ethiopian military is still on the Amhara region where military wants to crush Fano groups. Take forward.